Okay, welcome to today's webinar, Adapting K-12 STEM Transportation Outreach Programs to a Virtual Environment During COVID. We're really happy to have you here and we have some great speakers lined up. Today's webinar is sponsored by the STRIDE Center. STRIDE is the 2016 USDOT Region 4 University Transportation Center. We are a consortium of 10 colleges and universities in the Southeast with the University of Florida as the lead institution. Our mission is to develop novel strategies for reducing congestion. We invite you to contribute questions at any time today through the chat box and we'll answer them at the end of the talk. Today, we welcome three speakers who will talk about their K-12 outreach efforts. Dr. Jennifer Meadows is an assistant professor at Tennessee Tech University for the College of Education. She holds a PhD in exceptional learning with a STEM education concentration. As an educator for over 20 years, Dr. Meadows has experienced teaching as well as designing and facilitating professional development for both K-12 and higher education. Her primary research interests are in informal STEM education, pre-service teacher education, and interdisciplinary teaching and learning. Joining her today is Carrie Wilson, who is a PhD, PhD student at Tennessee Tech in curriculum and instruction, focusing on STEM education. She's taught math for the past seven years and works as a research assistant at the Millard Oakley STEM Center. Dr. Dimitra Michalaka is an associate professor in civil and environmental engineering at the Citadel. Her research is primarily focused on traffic operations, congestion pricing, traffic simulation, and engineering education. She has extensive experience with K-12 and workforce development programs and serves in numerous leadership positions within engineering education and across the engineering profession. Thank you all for joining us today. And I will now turn the webinar over to Jennifer. Thank you, Andine. Hello, everyone. Um, thank you for joining us today. Go ahead and uh, share. Does that look good? Give me a thumbs up. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to be sharing about um, a workshop that we did here at Tennessee Tech. Um, we entitled this STEM in Motion, and uh, we're going to focus on our workshop for 2020. So in 2019, we designed and facilitated a successful in-person STRIDE workshop for middle school science and math teachers. For 2020, we really hope to produce a similar successful workshop, this time for high school math and science teachers. Well, 2020 put some obstacles in our path. Due to restrictions in place, limiting the size of groups gathering, um, we found ourselves unable to host educators on campus for our workshop. Also, the educators that we wanted to work with and we hope to serve were under incredible pressures with remote and hybrid instruction. So, we faced these obstacles head on. Our solution was to provide a virtual workshop utilizing Google Sites. We were intentional to incorporate tools for teaching virtually that teachers could use with their own students. This online workshop was designed to engage high school math and science teachers in transportation related activities and subsequently encourage them to incorporate transportation topics into their own lessons. The workshop was developed to include 11 unique modules that were created by experts in education and in civil engineering. Each module included engaging materials, both in a virtual format, as well as activities that required physical hands-on learning from the educators. All the modules required some form of response from participants, including data collection from experiments that they conducted, as well as reflections about their own classroom practice. Participants worked individually as well as cooperatively via our online platform. The workshop required approximately 20 hours of their time to complete. 
The first module was created by Lena Abunasif, a PhD student in the College of Engineering here at Tennessee Tech. This was an introduction to transportation in the classroom. It included topics like what is transportation, why is it important, how do we transport things, and how to use transportation. We also looked at what are possible jobs, how can too much transportation be a bad thing, and she completed that with an activity called We Need a Road. Upon completion of this module, the participants answered questions using Google Form, which you're going to notice we use Google Forms quite a bit as our response mechanism. They answered questions that helped us um, understand um, the connection with their own standards that they were using. And specifically looking at the activity, We Need a Road, they looked at that and said, how could they modify it to be used in their own classroom? The next module was um, created here at the Oakley STEM Center, and it was about the lending library that we have here. In this module, the participants were trained um, in order to use the lending library and be able to check out those things for their own classrooms. Participants watched a video about how to navigate our system, our website, along with four additional videos that highlighted specific pieces of equipment that we have available for checkout. And you can see in the pictures here, this is a student worker that we have at the, the Millard Oakley STEM Center. And he just demonstrated various equipment. So then to certify that they had watched all the videos and they understood how to access the website, participants submitted information and were added into our system um, via Google Form again. Next up was Dr. Stephen Click of a College of Engineering um, here at Tennessee Tech. He created the third module, uh, Developing Critical Thinking Skills via Current Topics in Transportation. So with this one, Dr. Click used some activities that he actually uses with some of his civil engineering students and adapted that for our K-12 educators. Participants looked at ride share in the gig economy and infrastructure funding gap as topics for objective analysis and evaluation to build critical thinking skills. Responses for participants were again collected with Google Forms but we also used another system called Poll Everywhere. Again, trying to bring in different things that the educators could then take and use in their own classrooms. The next module was focusing on careers in transportation. Participants explored both the Dream Big project as well as other videos about specific careers in transportation. The Dream Big project is a project that encompasses resources and programs designed for students, teachers, engineers, and science centers, and includes many hands-on activities, girl-centered events, lesson plans, design challenges, videos, and more. After the participants viewed the Dream Big project and the short videos about specific careers, they thought about three of these particular resources that they would use in their classroom and shared that again via Google Form with how they thought that would be useful to their own classroom. Next up, we had three modules created by Dr. Kelly Moore. Kelly is a College of Education lecturer focusing on secondary science. She created three modules called Speed Limits, problem-based learning, and weighing a car. So with her first module, um, Speed Limits, Dr. Moore shared an activity from a publication um, produced by the National Science Teaching Association, NSTA. It's a book called It's Debatable. In the book, there are several free chapters available online, so we utilized those. Um, the participants explored the question, should speed limits be lowered to reduce traffic fatalities? With this, we utilized um, Flipgrid. So with Flipgrid, the, the participants recorded opening statements in a debate over the need for speed. 
They were placed into three different groups. They were either truck drivers, parents, um, actually it was four groups, <laughs> business leaders or police officers. Then they uh, used evidence from selected articles to support their position for the need for speed. Next, Dr. Moore created a module called Problem-Based Learning. Um, she utilized another NSTA text called Problem-Based Learning in the Physical Science Classroom. With this one, we did provide the book for participants, and we looked at multiple chapters. Specifically with this one, we looked at chapter five called Get Moving. This chapter looked at four problems. Um, there were Get Me Out There, Fastest Human, Constantly Moving, and, <clears throat> excuse me, Good Driver. Participants read excerpts from that particular text, and then they also watched a video that Dr. Moore created. From there, we utilized another platform called Padlet. On Padlet, the participants responded to various questions related to the text. They were asked to create a convincing argument that either Johnson or Bailey was the fastest runner. And then they had to explain um, how to use this activity in their own classroom. And then participants were able to follow up with each other. So we had some collaboration with this one. And then last, Dr. Moore created this one um, out of just an idea that she had um, working with high school students previously. It was called Weighing a Car. In this module, participants explored three things. They looked at Newton's third law, they looked at air pressure, and they also looked at unit conversions. They first watched a video that Dr. Moore created, and then they conducted their own experiment and collected data. They were asked to park a car on a smooth level surface like the concrete driveway, and then place a graph paper behind each tire on the, on the ground, and then carefully roll the car back so that the tires rested fully on the graph paper. Then they determined the area of the tire that's in contact with the ground by tracing around the tire as close as possible to where it meets the paper. Next, they determined the air pressure in the tire with a pressure gauge several times to take the most representative pressure in pounds per square inch. Then they made a crayon rubbing of a section of tire tread going across the entire surface side to side of the tire. They found the recorded weight of the car either by using an internet search or by checking the frame of the driver's side door, the load plate information. And then the data was used to calculate the area of the tire outlined on the graph paper and then adjusted by considering the percentage of the tire that was actually in contact with the ground based on that crayon rubbing. The weight load on the tire was then determined by multiplying the tire pressure by the amount of adjusted contact area. And then that process was repeated for all four tires. The analysis then was to determine the percent error of the accepted or actual weight of the car compared to the experimental weight. The teachers, the educators thought this was really interesting. We had some um, great results with this and it was actually pretty accurate. They submitted their um, data from their own experiment, again, through Google Forms. And then next up, Carrie's going to share with us um, two modules that she created. So I'll turn it over to Carrie. Hi, everyone. Um, I'm Carrie Wilson. I'm a PhD student in the College of Ed here at Tennessee Tech. And I created two modules, one about blind spots um, in transportation and um, and people as well for geometry and then lighting up transformations, which has to do with algebra um, and transforming those um, models like quadratics, um, linear models or absolute functions and things of that nature. So with this first module, blind spots, um, I had the teachers that participated in this program watch a series of videos and complete an experiment about determining blind spots. 
the experiment involved just a simple pencil and they um, stood with their body up against a wall and they were not allowed to move their heads. Um, and they moved the pencil until it disappeared. Even though the pencil was right in front of them, they couldn't see the end of the pencil. Um, and it's a very cool experiment and it involves similar triangles and geometry. Um, and I think a lot of the teachers enjoyed that, especially the math teachers. <laughs> um, participants gained knowledge about blind spots in semi-trucks, in driving motor vehicles, and in technological advances. Um, it was very interesting how much technology can be incorporated into mirrors on a car. And um, I have loved sharing that with the teachers. Also, because I am a math teacher as well, I incorporated a significant amount of mathematics, like I said, um, similar triangles in this module, by practicing with participants with proportion statements in order to connect real world scenarios to mathematics. Um, participants also work to see how spatial reasoning, similarity, and real world problems work together to help them determine how to find their respective blind spots in their own eyes. Um, participants just responded to this module by creating a Google Doc with their completed data sheet from the experiment and submitted that through a Google form. They just took a picture with their phone um, and submitted that picture to me. Several of them reached out and asked questions and we had a very good discussion about this lesson and I hope that they were able to take this back to their classrooms, especially if they're mathematics teachers. In this second module I created, um, it is called Lighting Up Transformations. In this module, I challenged participants with a question. Which graphical model most closely simulates the flashlight beam to represent headlights? A linear model, absolute, quadratic, cubic or exponential. I focused on those particular models because those are in the Tennessee standards. Um, this could be easily reworked for other teachers and they can include different models or delete out a few models if they wanted to. It was very interesting. Some teachers went up beyond my choices and did some research and found the model for light. Um, and so it was very interesting, their responses. Um, they were asked to explore the online math tool Desmos which is a very powerful graphing calculator online. Um, and it's very useful for students to see the different transformations of the models. They also looked at the science behind how headlights work by viewing a video on the subject. This module's main purpose was to help participants connect real world scenarios to mathematical models. And in the context of a flashlight beam, modeling the lights on a vehicle, um, we simplified it to just a quadratic function could be used to model that, or maybe an absolute value function, either could be easily argued um, for which one might be better. And it really depends on the person who's making that argument. Um, with the Desmos activity, the participants are introduced to graphical transformations when they use the sliders on Desmos to manipulate the functions. Um, the sliders make the graph more narrow if it's a quadratic and wider, kind of like you would see with a flashlight that has a zoom in or out feature. And we did send flashlights to the participants so that they had something in their hands to work with, just in case you never know if they have a flashlight that has a zoom on it or not. And then participants saw how these manipulations changed the equation and the graph at the same time. And they connected that to identifying parent functions and transforming those parent functions, which completely aligns with um, the Tennessee standards. And then participants responded to this module by creating a Google Doc with their completed data sheet from their experiment and submitted that through a Google form. And it was interesting that some of the particip participants did this in a spreadsheet Fathers did it just in a Google Word form, um, and it was it was very much fun to see their responses and their arguments. Back to you, Dr. Meadows. Thanks, Karen. Thank um, the final module for this workshop was Transportation Education Resources. In this module, participants were asked to explore links to various transportation education resources and to think about how they can incorporate them in their own classrooms. Again, remember, we're working with both math and science. They then completed a Google form to share their thoughts about three particular links and how they intended to use them. And then we also incorporated Padlet again so that they could share resources that weren't on this particular module that uh, they wanted to share with other participants. 
And then um, after completing the workshop modules, um, the 19 participants created their own transportation related activities. You see one here, it's a bird, it's a plane, it's a drone. Um, they all followed the same template, which was shared during an online meeting with both the participants and the facilitators. The um, created activities are housed in both the workshop Google site, which we are sharing the link um, with that for you. You can check those out, as well as on our Oakley STEM Center um, website with Tennessee Tech. By housing the activity plans on the STEM Center website, we were avail um, making this available to other educators to use in their own classrooms as well thus having a greater reach than just the number of participants completing the workshop. Um, we have a couple other examples here, roundabouts, do they really help? And biodiesel preparation. Again, we had uh, 19 participants. We have 19 good lessons to share there with those. Um, a comparison of the completed pre and post surveys showed that participants did gain both knowledge about transportation topics as well as the teaching of transportation topics in STEM education settings. These results were encouraging in that future workshops, both virtual and face-to-face -face, can benefit from the materials created in this online setting. Here are some comments that we had from participants. Um, one said this was an interesting PD opportunity that helped to learn lots about career resources. Another one um, mentioned the different platforms that we use, the different apps uh, for online learning. And she uh, said that uh, she enjoyed using these apps and may need to use um, those in her classroom for upcoming uh, shutdowns. Like we, we know we've all had some uh, crazy things happen this past year. And then we really love this one. Uh, this participant said, I've been training all summer for online teaching and STEM and found this particular training to be the most fulfilling of the summer. So we were very pleased to hear that. Um, so here's our information. I'm Jennifer Meadows and we had Carrie Wilson. Uh, we'd love to hear from anyone and, and answer questions if you have any later. And then here's the link to our Google site as well. And I believe Andine was gonna share that um, later as well. So I'll turn it over to, I guess, um, Andine or Dimitri, I'm not sure. <laughs> yes, thank you so much. That was really great. We are gonna move it over to Dimitra. So if you want to go ahead and share your screen, that would be great. Okay. Uh, hello, everyone. And thank you for being here. Um, so I'm going to talk to you about um, uh, some K through 12 programs that we adapted to a virtual environment uh, during COVID. And uh, uh, the first one, uh, which is a major one, is the Tour of Engineering Camp. And I want to tell you a little bit about how the setting was pre-COVID and then how we adjusted it during COVID. And then I want to talk to you about other two programs that we, um, again, adjusted because of this new reality that we're living in. So the a Tour of Engineering is, uh, was a one week long residential summer camp and it's organized by the South Carolina Governance School for uh, Science and Mathematics. And uh, Mrs. Susan en Engelhard uh, is with us today and she is the head and heart of this organization. Um, and we have about uh, six and a half hours of classroom every day. The camp starts Sunday and then goes all the way uh, through the next following Saturday. And I say here more than six and a half hours because some students really want to stay longer in the class and work on their projects. Uh, students are motivated. They really want to be there. And uh, we go through several things during the week. So we start with introducing students to what engineering is, what engineers do, uh, skills that will make them successful through um, an, an engineering future career. And then we go to different engineering disciplines like civil engineering. Uh, we introduce them to what civil engineering is, what civil engineers do, the different sub-disciplines. 
under civil engineering, and then we put them to do hands-on activities. Now, when we were in person, um, we were using a software to design the bridges, and then we were using Kinex to build them. And I'm going to show you some pictures later on. And then we were, uh, as part of civil, we were also designing uh, complete streets. So we were ending up having a network of sections of streets and bridges um, to work with. Then we were uh, focusing on mechanical engineering and after we introduced them and tell them what mechanical engineers do and um, the different things that you can study under mechanical engineering, uh, sorry, mechanical engineering, uh, then we're giving them a Lego um, EV uh, Mindstorm to build autonomous vehicles. Then following, we were discussing about electrical engineering and computer engineering. And as part of that, we were asking them to program their vehicles that they just build to go from one section of their streets that they design and build to another section of a street crossing through the bridges. So it was all like se different sections building in a big project. Hey, as part of the camp, we also had a uh, fun uh, games uh, that they were done in teams and they were either competing or individual. And we also used board games uh, th through that part. And then at the end, we were saying, okay, what did you guys learn? And what is the uh, engineer of the future is going to work on? So here I give you some um, ideas of like part of the lecture. So as we were uh, introducing students to what engineers do, they had like, uh, pictures and lecture, and then we were putting them in teams to think uh, per ser and uh, with everybody. Uh, then we also watched some videos uh, as part of that, and then we were going into our activities. So if you see here, uh, you see the students when we were in person, uh, before COVID working on uh, designing their bridges, and they were picking a design, and then uh, they were going ahead to build them using Kinex. Uh, here is uh, what you see for the complete streets. So um, here in this picture on the left, which I really like, is that they had here built this, their streets and then they put their bridges and then another section of the street. So all the teams came together to build a, a transportation network. As we were going into mechanical engineering, we said that they had to build their vehicle and then they had to program their vehicle to go from one section of the street, cross a bridge and park at the other section of the street. Uh, it was a lot of fun and students really enjoy these kind of activities. Here you see some pictures from the board games that we played again, thinking of engineering as we were going along, designing roads, uh, building highways. And here there are different challenges that we put them in different teams to work uh, together, this is a, a curb uh, challenge. And uh, then we were uh, closing into making them think uh, what would be some cool things that engineers will do in the future. Okay, and now the uh, coronavirus hit and then our life transformed, right? So when uh, we were discussing in 2020 what to do with these kind of programs, I had a lot of discussions with uh, Mrs. Susan, and we said, okay, how can we still offer some kind of program, but thinking of the safety of our students, uh, the professors and everyone involved, families, staff. So um, after the discussion, we um, thought that this is a program that can be offered online, of course, with some changes that I'm going to discuss. And we still kept it one week long, but this time starting Monday and finishing Friday, so it wasn't any weekend. And this daily schedule uh, was that we started at around 9 a.m., but students could log in a little bit earlier to check the technology and make sure that they can see, uh, they can hear, they can share screen if they need to. And then we had in the morning one hour instruction, so nine to 10, which I'm going to uh, tell you what that included. Then two hours uh, offline work time, but at the same time also office hours. So if they needed to get a hold of me, uh, they could at that time to ask questions. Then noon to one, we had break. 
Then we were coming back at one for another a one hour instruction. And then we were continuing with one and a half hour, again, work time. Now the uh, South Carolina Governor's School did an amazing job in uh, um, finding the students in communicating with the students beforehand. So any software that they needed to use, for example, the Canvas, the Zoom, uh, the Bridge Design software that students had access to it before the camp starts. So they were pre fully prepared. They also put together a list of materials to send them to, to their home. So students received the packet with um, materials that we were going to use that week. And in addition to that, a t-shirt and other like uh, good things um, from the governor's school. And uh, then they assigned to each class a teaching assistant who was responsible in helping students with the technology and also monitoring the chat, making sure that students don't deviate from our um, uh, uh, camp information or material and deviate in other conversations in the chat. Uh, also, uh, the, the school was responsible uh, in case any student wasn't participating or just participate for very few or seem disengaged to contact them or their parents and see what's going on and then put them back in track or maybe drop them off the course. So we worked very um, together. Like I was just um, teaching the material, but all the logistics were handled uh, by the uh, governor school. So the camp expectations, when it came to the online instruction that I told you that we had one hour in the morning and one hour in the afternoon, um, we could have some lecture times where I was introducing them to the different topics. We could have some discussion time where students either were paired in discussion boards or they were just um, open in discussing different topics verbally or in the chat. Uh, we could take uh, qu Kahoot quizzes where everybody was participating and students seemed to enjoy them uh, pretty much uh, well. And then we may have had other activities like in one of our uh, topics, we had a guest lecture. Uh, when it came to the office hours, so we had those two hours in the morning, one and a half hour in the afternoon. I was keeping the Zoom open, being there uh, in case students wanted to ask questions. During those times, they had to do some hands-on activities at home or even pair with other students to work on something together. And I, I was using that time to either introduce them to the activity uh, or just asking them to work uh, through the activity or um, uh, do something like all together. So at the end of every uh, work time, they had to submit uh, what they achieved uh, in Canvas. So every morning and every afternoon after those hours were over, they had to submit something to just make sure um, they were working and they were accomplishing something during those hours. Then we were expecting them to attend all the sessions, uh, to participate when they were asked to, and then use the chat uh, for questions or some discussions and make sure, as I said before, they submit uh, some work. So the week overview, it followed the same format as before COVID. So we did have the introduction to engineering and what engineers do as we had before. We were introducing them to civil engineering and transportation engineering, but this time the activities were different. So since we couldn't bring them together, and since it wasn't feasible to send them Lego kits or Kinex kits, um, then we, uh, tr we transform those activities. So we still asked them to design the bridges using the, so the same software. But now when it came to building them, we asked them to first build them using office supplies and then uh, um, build bridges using edible materials, which was uh, the students found, found really fun and interesting to do. Then we went through different transportation challenges. And in this case, we used more uh, online software and also uh, just making sketch of our, the students' neighborhood streets. Then moving on to mechanical engineering, for that part, um, I had a guest uh, speaker which talked to us about, um, uh, he works for Volvo cars, so he talked to us about what mechanical engineers do uh, when it comes to automotive um, uh, engineering. 
And uh, for that part, they had to build an, um, a, dis a safety collision device uh, that they had to protect an egg from dropping. Uh, then we moved to electrical and computer engineering part. And for that one, students had to work in groups to design a safety app when the uh, people uh, travel through a work um, a school zone. Okay, and that one, I was skeptical in the start since they had to work in groups, but students really enjoyed it. And in the end, um, they, they told me that we enjoyed working in groups, even in the online setting. Uh, for closing, again, we had uh, the discussion on the different uh, engineering types or what engineers are going to accomplish and be working in the, on the future. And then we had the Kahoot quiz that was long and gave, uh, we went through all the material covered in, the, uh, in that week. At the end, students had to um, pre present what they liked in the camp. And that was amazing to see that um, at least uh, like every activity made it to at least one student's list of uh, great things that we did during that week. So here are some pictures. So this was an exercise for them to design a social uh, distancing classroom. So when we come back together, we said, okay, so if there is still COVID, how can we be safely uh, in the same room? So they, this is one. Uh, here is another one that students actually used uh, the computer to come up with the cl their classroom. Uh, here are some uh, breed designs. So the first one was with the office uh, supplies. And you see that we asked them as a weight to put a certain amount of uh, water in a cup that everybody had available at home. Uh, here are some pictures about the edible materials. Here, uh, we didn't specify what materials they could use. The only uh, important thing was that those materials they could be eaten. Um, so students um, came up with different ideas here and different materials. Uh, as a part of their uh, designs, we had discussions. So after they were submitting their designs, we were coming back. I was presenting some of them and then we had discussions, for example, on this one, I was asking them, is that the trust bridge? Okay, so then we were talking about, we had discussion about the type of bridges that exist and how we can make them strong and how we can cover extensive spans. So um, students really enjoyed uh, that part. Here were some websites that we used um, to think about our transportation infrastructure and network and how we can make that more accessible and available for uh, everyone, like the complete street. So here is the project sidewalk that we used. And here is the street mix is another website that you can use and here try to design complete streets. So for their activity, the, uh, the students uh, were asked in the start to go out uh, safely with um, maybe a parent accompanying them and make a sketch of their neighborhood street as is um, exists now. And then I, was, uh, I asked them to redesign it thinking of all users. So here, for example, you see the one before. So you see a nice sketch with dimensions included as was asked, they had some scale that they had to follow. And then here uh, you see um, a one after that, um, if you see they included bike lanes, they included uh, crosswalks, they put curb ramp. Um, so it really resonated to them that we need to make our uh, transportation network accessible for all. Here is another one that they had the before and the after, and you see the before is just a, a vehicle street, and then they put sidewalks, bike lanes, um, uh, for, and in both sides. So very nice to see. And this is part of their presentation at the end. So this was the favorite activity of a student. Here you can see the safety collision devices. So they used paper and they had to protect the egg and they came up with different ones and they had to send me videos of their device, um, how successful it was and from what height they could drop that egg and still uh, that egg not break. So you see here uh, different designs. 
Here is a screenshot of the guest lecture. So students all of, also perceive very uh, well the guest lecture. It was short, it included a lot of pictures and it was able, like students were able to ask questions and see um, a little bit of the real life of an engineer. Uh, here is a, a, a screenshot of student, uh, of the activities that that student liked. And it was um, nice to see that they included several of the activities that we did throughout the week. Here is a screenshot of uh, the app that they created uh, when it came to, to pass school zones. And I was very happy to see how creative they got with that. And even the one team put that uh, we need to include several languages for, for, for everyone to be understanding what um, the, that they are approaching a school zone, what the speed limit is. Here you see a screenshot of um, the class at the end um, after they presented. So they were very nice kids, uh, behaved great. So it was a success, I would say. So with that, uh, this summer, the governance school is going to offer both in-person and online programs. So I'm going to also teach uh, a very similar program this summer for uh, two weeks. Now, in terms of other activities uh, that we had to adapt uh, to the new reality is that uh, I was able to contact the high schools in the area. And this time with the virtual setting was much easier for everyone to organize. So instead of going there in person to talk to the students, um, I was able to join some of their classes in a different uh, engineering focused ones. So the principles of engineering uh, and other pre-engineering courses and also join uh, them during the e-week activities and talk to them about uh, what civil engineering is and what transportation engineering is. Um, so in this one, I just talked about my passion that is transportation engineering. Uh, because they had different uh, professionals talk to them about different uh, topics in civil engineering and in other engineering. So I was able to join them. So you will see here that some of the students uh, were via Zoom as I was, and then some students were there in the classroom with social distancing in place. So we had this hybrid uh, setting. And it was very nice because then uh, I got question, a lot of questions from the students about how is my job, uh, what transportation engineers do, that they didn't know that transportation engineering uh, was a subdiscipline of civil and that people can pursue as profession. Uh, this is another program. So this is an introduce a gear to engineering event. So this uh, is going for many years at the Citadel campus where we um, collaborate with the Swiss Society of Women Engineers professional chapter, with our student chapter on campus, and with the um, uh, Girl Scouts of Eastern South Carolina. So we bring uh, Girl Scouts from all around the state and do an, a one day event, it's three hour long event. They come in the afternoon and they work in groups and they do hands on activities, and in the end, they earn a badge. Uh, so this year, we still wanted to offer that event, but we did it with uh, following CDC guidelines. So we still had it in person, but you see here that in the past, we used to have eight students in the table. Uh, but here you see a few students along with our volunteers that they were helping them through the activities. Uh, you see they were wearing masks. So you see them again working together. And uh, when it came to the break, we came, uh, we went outside for a snack and break at the parade field that we had in front of the building uh, where we offered the event. So um, you see here that uh, we were able to still offer some K through 12 programs. Some were easier this time around, some were harder, um, but um, I think that we're engineers and we can accomplish uh, great things and uh, educate our future um, st our students and uh, future engineers, hopefully. So that concludes my presentation. So I will be happy to uh, receive any questions you have. Sondin? Fantastic. Thank you very much. 
So I'd like to open it up with a question for both, for all of our speakers, um, in terms of what you see our next step. So kind of where do you go from here now that you've done a completely virtual environment, how you see kind of your next step? Maybe we'll start with Jennifer and then we can go to Demetra. Sure. So we're in planning for our next workshop this summer, and we've decided to do a hybrid model. From the things that we learned in 2019, the, the on-site workshop was great. We were actually able to bring students in from a summer workshop and um, do some activities with them that the teachers created. So we want to incorporate that with what we did in 2020 and those online modules. The teachers um, loved having those that they can access anytime. They can come back to those throughout the year. So we're gonna do a blend of those two. We're gonna do online modules first and then have a day where we actually bring students in and do activities with them as well. Great. And Demetra, you mentioned a little bit, if you could just expand on what you're going to be doing this summer. Yes. Yeah, so this summer, the um, Governor School is going to offer both in-person and uh, virtual camps. So a person that I'm going to teach two weeks of virtual camp. And uh, in terms of the other activities and moving into the future, I think that uh, when it comes to joining the high school programs and talking to the students, probably we will do a mix like of hybrids and some professors maybe going there in person and some others uh, just uh, presenting virtually depending on the schedule since it was so easy to schedule now this year, uh, those talks. And then uh, the introduce a girl to engineering, we will keep offering it in person uh, because we thought that that was uh, better and we can um, bring more students on campus than have them actually virtually for that uh, type of event. Great, thank you. We have a question for uh, Dr. Meadows. Have any of the teachers incorporated these modules in, your, in their classes yet? So um, we have not done a follow-up. That's a really good question. I, I'd love to know that myself. Uh, I do know some of them personally and they have definitely used the resources. I'm not sure if they've actually implemented the lessons. So uh, great question. We, we definitely need to follow up on that. Great. If any of the participants have questions, please enter them in the chat box and we'll make sure to share them with everybody. Um, a num both of you mentioned a number of tools that you incorporated to try to break up the day. Um, I heard uh, Poll Everywhere, Google Forms, Flipgrid, Padlet, um, Kahoot, and then other uh, uh, strategies like the Bridge Design Program and Street Mix in Demetra's camp. So do you want to highlight just a couple of things that maybe worked well or things that maybe you could see doing a little bit in the future? that would help break up that, that sort of uh, virtual session for the participant? So I can start. So in the lecture part, what worked great were some videos uh, that they were said in the middle of the lecture just to break up even that hour, even though for maybe others doesn't uh, seem that long, but for the kids is quite a long time. And then uh, it really worked well uh, having those online platforms like the street mix when we came to transportation and the uh, project sidewalk because it was very easy to access. So they were just having the link and they were accessing it online. When it came to bridge designers, since they had to download it on their computers, that didn't work well for everybody. So they had to use their parents' computers and then that it was took a little bit of work um, to make it work for everybody. But the, the websites that you could do work online, it was, they were great in, for my, from my experience. Great, thank so you. Something that we were thinking about was definitely how could our teachers learn some techniques for using in their own classroom? Um, that was why we really decided to highlight things like Flipgrid and Padlet um, and Google Forms. As we decided which one do we wanna use for which specific application, it was, do we want them to be able to see everyone else's work so that they could see everybody's share and collaborate? That's when we use things like Flipgrid and Padlet because they um, allow all participants to see 
what's being added by each participant. Flipgrid is videos, so they actually get to make videos and share with each other. Padlet, they could share um, anything. They could share links, they could type, they could put pictures, um, lots of different applications there. And then with the Google Forms, that was times when we needed personal responses that might not necessarily be shared with everyone. Great. I, oh, I'm sorry. Nope. Can I add something? Um, this past year from last summer, because I'm still relatively new to technology and doing things online, um, I would like to have had my participants work together on a Google Doc. I think if they had been able to talk to each other through a Google Doc or a Zoom meeting, um, they would have understood even more, uh, especially for the lighting up the transformations. And um, so that is what I would like to incorporate in the future is having them working together <laughs> through a Google Doc and possibly Zoom and they can, you know, pick their own times to meet. Super. Building on that for Tennessee Tech, um, what were some of the advantages and disadvantages of having a professional development program for teachers that um, that was virtual this summer? So, Last summer. <laughs> right. When when we typically have teachers um, attend professional development sessions here, um, many of them are driving, right? They're, they're having to drive distance, maybe even stay overnight near the university. This really took that burden away. We could get teachers from um, areas that maybe don't necessarily come to the university as much. So that was a big advantage. Um, disadvantage, you know, other things in life get in the way when it's online maybe, and, and we did a lot of um, asynchronous so they could work things on their own. Um, so times had to be very flexible, uh, due dates, those kind of things. We, we had more of a range rather than this is the specific date. Um, so we, we had to think about timing a lot more. That was a little difficult. Um, but I think overall, we, we learned a lot and learned that this is something we want to continue. Um, to, to reach more people outside of our area. And um, from the teacher's point of view also, they, they love having those resources that they can just easily access. You know, they're, they're there at Google site. We're not going to shut it down. Um, they'll be able to have that and use it as long as they want. Wonderful. I have one last question for both of you. Um, and that is, do you have any plans to share your programs a little bit more widely so other people could adopt elements of it or lessons or resources? For uh, my perspective, absolutely. So this is, uh, these programs are also developed with the help of Stride and Ondine had helped a lot on this. So um, we are uh, willing to share the programs and we were uh, putting together some lesson plans that hopefully will be available soon. And with these efforts, the webinars, uh, yeah. And I would just echo that, that we're definitely willing <laughs> um, to, to share what we've created. Um, and we can talk about that in the future. But yeah, we're, we're um, definitely up for getting what we did out there and helping others. Wonderful. Uh, for those who participated, if you haven't had a chance, there is a link in the chat box to a very brief survey that we'd love for you to complete, giving us feedback and how we can improve future Stride webinars. I'd like to thank all three of our speakers today. This was a fantastic webinar. I, even though I know about your programs, it was really wonderful hearing more about them and seeing so many great pictures. And we look forward to hearing more about your next summer adventures. Thank you so much for joining us today, and we hope to see you on future Stride webinars.